John, I love talking about ultimate reality and asking some very distinguished people what they think it is. Uh, many of my scientist friends would say it's quantum physics or the laws of physics or whatever is the uh, yeah or whatever are the fundamental laws of physics sitting beneath quantum physics. Uh, some pr professors of religion or theologians would say it's a personal God. Mm -hmm. You've talked about something called the real. I'd like to understand what that is. The real is something that we have to postulate in order to understand uh, certain data. The data uh, include the experience of a, of a transcendent reality of some kind, um, in religious experience or transcendental experience. It includes the, um, the fact of a plurality of religions and the fact that in their belief systems they contradict one another very often. Um, now, you see, from a, from, from a point of view that accepts religious experience as authentic, as an experience of something, um, we have to explain why, why uh, it takes such different forms. And the reason, I think, is fairly clear, namely that it occurs within different human cultures which have grown up over the centuries, which provide us with, a, with different vocabularies, different concepts, and concepts go to create and to form our experience. So uh, the actual experience uh, is of a, uh, of a God, a personal God, or of the universal principle of the Tao in Taoism, uh, or of um, another personal God, the Allah of Islam, um, or Vishnu, Shiva, etc., within the Hindu faiths. Um, all of these are joint creations of the impact upon us of the transcendent real and our human sets of concepts. Some would say that the human um, constellation of concepts that have de developed out of culture entirely explain religion and the experiences that people have are biologically based, something in the brain shoots here and there, and they have an experience, and we really can't trust that. But what we can trust are the laws of science and, and the laws of physics which we, which we see. When you see the real, how do the, the, the structure of the world, uh, how, does that, how is that part of it? Well, you see, the scientists, the science is all of them, are studying the physical universe, the physical universe. And if there is something beyond the physical universe, the physical sciences have nothing to do with it. They know nothing about it. It, it doesn't touch them, they don't touch it. So uh, they have this um, essential limitation that if there is a reality beyond the physical, they, they, they're never going to discover it. <laughs> And so they're going to say, if they exist in our modern culture, they're going to say it doesn't exist. So how can we have confidence that the diverse religions, which you've said and which clearly contradict one another, uh, are in some way related to this real, uh, based upon isolated religious experiences that some people have? It seems, seems a little flimsy to tether all of these conflicting religions to some real? Well, the experience that, as it's formed within the religions is very, very powerful. I mean, the, the Christian worshipping the Holy Trinity can have, in, in worship in a church, can have a very powerful sense of the reality of God. And likewise, the, the Muslim at the Friday prayers in the mosque can have a very powerful sense of, of being in the presence of the Holy Allah, and so on. I mean, um, if, but if, uh, I mean, many scientists, of course, are, are religious people, and, and like, for example, 
uh, John Polkenhorn, but many others themselves are worshippers of God and, uh, and uh, fairly traditional Christian believers. But um, if they're not, well, they're missing out on something. <laughs> Well, the emotional experiences are certainly real, and one sees that in church revival services and different expressions of different religions, but one also sees that at football games. Yes. <laughs> and it would be hard for me, if I came from Mars, to distinguish between one from the other. It looks like the same kind of human yes. expression energized by crowds and crowd psychology. and. Yeah rooting for your side or whatever it happens to be, be yes, rather uh, indistinguishable. Yes, as a matter of fact, you know, your visitor from Mars visiting England would say that the religion of England is football, <laughs> meaning soccer, right, the, American, right. the English form of football. Yeah, sure. That's quite true. Um, and, um, but you see, a, a, a church, uh, I mean, you, you've been referring to revivalist church services, where it was, people are whipped up into a highly emotional state. Yes. But I, I was thinking more of the ordinary, uh, the ordinary worship in an ordinary church, which is not highly emotional, but it can be very profound nevertheless. And so can, for example, the, the, the silent worship in, in a Quaker meeting place, mm -hmm. uh, which actually this is where I go myself. Mm -hmm. um, in in the silence, we become conscious of being in the presence of a transcendent reality that makes various claims upon us. And um, this is not emotion, so, so that the analogy you've been suggesting doesn't really apply. I understand that we learn that the real exists by seeing its expression in diverse religions. But what can we say about the real as it exists in itself. As it exists in itself, we can't say anything in human language about it because it is trans-categorial, beyond the categories of the human mind. Um, we have to postulate it, but it has no... We, we can't say that it is personal or impersonal, good or bad, large or small, etc. <laughs> simply because none of these... Um, opposites apply to it. it. It isn't that because it is not good, therefore it is bad. Uh, rather, the concept of good and bad simply do not apply to it. It's, these are human concepts, and it is, is trans-categorial, beyond the categories of the human mind. Some would say that's a rationalization, because it doesn't exist. You put it in a trans-categorial mode, so we're prevented from asking any questions. You, <laughs> you, you put a moat around it, so I can't attack it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I can see that uh, point of view, yes. But, uh, <laughs> you see, I come back uh, uh, always to the starting point of experience, religious experience. And I, I base, ultimately, everything is based on that. If you, if you ignore religious experience, religion can simply consist in human institutions, which are not only human, but all too human. <laughs>